How to eat well in a Mexican prison. <laughs> well, it's gonna cost you. At the end of this video, I'll give you my foolproof plan to eating better in a Mexican prison. Let's get into this video. Drugs, money, mansions, and private jets. A myth is being created around the narco culture. Narco culture has gone mainstream and can be seen in various areas like music, religion, soap operas, fashion, and language. But it's not all the pretty roses people like to see. Join me as I tell you the truth behind cartel life. This is narco culture. Hey, what's up guys? My name's JC. I am Ron Strong. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss nothing. If you're part of my crew, mi familia, mi raza, you already know. Subanse la suburban. Let's get this video on the road. I was in prison, prisons in Mexico for four years for drug trafficking. The family that I worked for took care of me by sending me $1,000 a month. So I got to live the really high life in there. When I say high life, I mean I got to eat at restaurants, I got to cook uh, food in my cell, I got to eat food from outside, I just got to pretty much live well. As they found out about my drug addiction and my drug use, the money stopped. Code, no drug use. So I did what I had to do to survive, live, and eat. I hustled my ass off what I know how to do. Today, I'm just gonna give you a couple tips if you end up in Mexican prison, how to eat better. There's two lines of people every day in front of that prison. Sundays and Thursdays are visitation. On these days, you don't have to worry about nothing. There's gonna be food to toss up in the air. There's gonna be food everywhere. The great thing about Mexican people is that they love to share food. So you don't have to worry about visitation days. We are talking about the days that you are alone, sad, thinking, <laughs> and, and doing time. Every day, there's two lines going into that prison from 5 a.m. to 2 p.m. The families wait, women, men, kids, all carrying. I don't know if you guys ever seen those big, big colorful Mexican bags that they, they build. They're like huge. I don't know how many gallons, I, I want to say it's like 20 gallon ba bags, but you'll see women, uh, men, kids carrying those bags full of food, like just buckets and buckets of food, bringing them in to the prison. Every day, this is carried out with, you know, a few families, because not all the inmates obviously are lucky to have this. It's like their way of having a, a, a hot meal with, with their loved ones. So their families do this on a regular basis. I seen this day in and day out. Like I used to be like, shit, man, they're fucking, their family really fucking loves them, you know? But like I said, only a handful are lucky. Not everybody gets this. And not everybody had not everybody's family has the money to do this because this is this gets very very expensive. I'll do another video of pretty much what everything cost me in there from carpet in my cell to my big screen TV. Everything costs money in there. So when the family brings all this food, they obviously have to tip all the guards inside. Then they have to tip what's called el what the fuck did they call them? They're like runners. What the fuck did they call them? Canasteros, there you go, canasteros. We had canasteros in every unit and it got so busy that every unit had its own canastero. You know, one, two, three. Every, they would nonstop be back and forth, back and forth with the bags. So now you have to tip him and he tips the guard, so it's it gets expensive. So like I said, not everybody's able to do this. Food in a Mexican prison is not the best. I am telling you by experience, and I done did that. You got the mystery meat, you got poorly cooked beans and rice with fucking rocks in there. 
you know, it cost me a couple of teeth in Mexico. It, just, it, it was, it was, it was a huge wake up call to do time, you know, cause I had did time already in the States in state prison. Then I ended up in Mexican, in the Mexican prison. And then from there I ended up going into the federal system. So here you go guys. These are my tips to eating well in a Mexican prison. One, make friends with one of those guys that's a local guy that gets shit sent to him every day. His family sending him food, everything. Make friends with him so that way when you have some money, some change, you can kind of donate it to his family so they can kind of like help you out, send some food your way. You know what I mean. You got to kind of finesse your way into that. Two, meet a local girl, start dating her, make her your girlfriend. That's the easiest way. You'll get visitation, you'll get food. I mean, you still have to hustle because you still have to pay her to make the food. You still have to get her the rice. You have to, it, it's, it's possible. Now you have somebody there to help you. Last but not least, if you know that you're going to do time in a Mexican prison and you're gonna be there for a while, it is best that you get there and right away look at what are your options to starting a business and making some money. This is true in most prisons. You have to figure out how you're gonna survive. If you do not want to be a leech on the women that you're talking to or your family members about money, you get there and you figure out what you're gonna do, whether you're gonna open a store, a restaurant, whatever it is you're gonna do. You gotta fucking survive, right? It is what it is. Last but not least, the biggest, biggest tip of all. Stay your ass out of prison. Whether it's in US, Mexican, China, it doesn't matter, stay out of prison. My name's JC, I am Ron Strong. Hey, don't judge nobody, stay in your lane, live savage, and remember, life is too short to spend it in prison. I don't care if the cage is made out of gold, it's still a cage, all right?